Okay, so good morning, everyone. And uh, in this presentation, I want to introduce you to my thesis topic image based control of the microfluidic system. Uh, my name is Nije, and I'm passionate about uh, exploring AI application in multidisciplinary domains. So, after this presentation, you should have a good idea of the background and the context of the topic which we will introduce necessary concept and knowledge for you to understand why we are doing this. And then when it comes to the definition of the work, meaning the specific goals and the outcomes that we are trying to achieve during this thesis work. And after that, we're gonna explain our method of achieving those goals. And then we're gonna show you the current progress of the work. And finally, uh, we're gonna share you the future uh, work planning for this season. Uh, experimental operations in pharmacy and medicine often requires large number of uh, experiments and data. For instance, the clinic, clinical trial. So this leads to large consumption of samples and high cost of time and labor. Uh, microfluidics is becoming very popular in this field because it can manipulate nanometer value of liquids in designed microchannel. These channels can have the width of a human air. Here, it has the advantage of low sample consumption due to its small size and dimension. More importantly, it, involve, it can enable the parallelization and the high throughput experimentations, meaning that we can do multiple experiments at the same time. Hence, it will reduce the time and the cost, uh, the cost of the time and labor significantly. So when we are doing multiple experiments at the, at the same time, it becomes more important that we have a good monitor and control of the experiment. To be able to do this, we need the support from image microscopy, which can help us to see what is going on during the experiment. Optical microscopy, which combines visible light and the system of lens, is widely used in the labs. However, it has a limited uh, field of view and the bigger the magnification, the smaller the view area becomes. On the other hand, lensless uh, microscopy, which uh, uses the uh, holography principle, is becoming an interesting research direction to obtain a large field of view. So to, in holography imaging, to obtain a hologram, we will need a point of light source, for instance, an LED. We can let the light source, or we can let the light pass through a pinhole and illuminate the semi-transparent sample. And in the end, we will use an image sensor to capture the hologram. The hologram contains both amplitude and face information of the project, which allow us to reconstruct the original image. To reconstruct the image, there are dedicated reconstruction algorithms. Um, however, the recent data-driven deep learning approach can, real, can reach real-time performance, which makes the live stream of the operation possible. Deep learning in holography is a supervised learning. It is, ner it is enabled by the optimization of deep convolutional neural network, which contains consists of uh, tens to hundreds of layers of convolutionary kernels, uh, bias turns, and nonlinear activation function. So after one uh, one-time effort training progress, the weights of these filters and bias of the network are optimized. Then the trained network can perform image construction tasks with a single forward pass of the network input. So now, uh, let's uh, quickly summarize the topic, uh, the topic definition uh, in this thesis. So first, we want to design and build the platform for lens-free holographic imaging. And then we want to de design and implement the deep learning approach for the holograph, hologram reconstructions. And after that, we want to evaluate this deep learning approach compared to the, uh, the existing reconstruction algorithm. And in the end, we want to make sure that the, the reconstructed image and videos for further is good enough for the further automation, automatic uh, analysis and control. 
So uh, now let's introduce the method, how we are actually trying to approach this uh, problem. So this, this uh, gives you an overview of what is the uh, flow uh, of, this, uh, of the problem. So first, uh, we will put our uh, object plate, which contains uh, samples that we are trying to observe. We will put it in, into the holographic image platform. So throughout this platform, we will get the raw hologram. And we will uh, use this hologram as an input of the network for the, uh, and the network is well, is already trained so that you can take this hologram as an input and they give us the reconstructed images or videos so that we can use it for further analyze. So this is an overview, uh, the more details about the holographic image platform. So we are actually using a microcomputer uh, in our cases is Raspberry Pi to actually uh, as the center control. So it will enable the LED and uh, through the pinhole, the lights will uh, illuminate the object on the object glass plate. And those hologram we will use the same MOS detector, uh, which again will be connected to the Raspberry Pi so that uh, can, we can obtain those uh, uh, hologram directly um, on the Reservoir Pi and we can directly show it in the monitor which is attached to it. Uh, the whole system can be, can, can be powered by a sing, uh, nor, uh, no, uh, normal uh, power bank so that uh, um, so it will self-powered and all those uh, elements will be in, uh, integrated together in the 3D printing cases so that this system it will be very uh, portable to use and, and also uh, uh, stable use in the future. <clears throat> and now we come to the uh, training of the deep neural network. So as you can see in this flow, um, the hologram uh, first will be uh, pre-processed uh, pre uh, using the free space propagation, and then will be, uh, and it becomes the network input. And we will use this uh, to train and the network and they gave out our output. And uh, we need to compare the network output and the ground truth, uh, which is uh, actual images we want, to, uh, we want to see. And we will compare this and uh, compute the error and the loss function between those two. And we will use this function to as a feedback for the network. So in the end, we want to have this error and loss function minimize as much as possible and reach our criteria. So that's then we, we, we will see that this network is well-trained for our reconstruction task. And now uh, let's come to have a, uh, show you the current progress of the work. Uh, so first for the hologram uh, image platform, we have already built our first prototype. So you can see the overview of the, uh, uh, of the of the uh, product, uh, different module here, um, but so um, so now we can actually use this setup to obtain some hologram, which we will show you in uh, in the in the later slide. Uh, but eventually, we want to have a uh, uh, we want to have a bigger case, uh, 3D printing cases, which will integrate all the things together. So in the end, we'll we, you will we will get uh, just a, a very big big black box. And uh, so now let's uh, have a look at the hologram which uh, we obtained compared to the optical images which we obtained directly from the optical microscope. So here you can see the comparison between the full scale uh, images between the hologram and also the, uh, also the, uh, the lens, uh, the microscopy uh, lens we obtained. So you can see that uh, uh, the the hologram we obtain has a, a way uh, much bigger uh, field of view than the microscopy. I personally, it's, it is probably like two, uh, three to four times bigger than the my, than the micros, um, optical microscopy and uh, microscope. And and then we do some, uh, we try to compare them uh, in, to the same object. 
So here you can see that uh, we, uh, we can show you two examples here, which one of them is just showing a uh, number, and another is just showing some uh, like sample uh, symbols that we, uh, we use for comparisons. So, uh, so from this result, we can already identify a few issues. So first, the hologram image are still very broad. So for that one, we think uh, we need to adjust the distance between the object plate and the camera. Um, so we will find, and, uh, and another one is uh, we will observe during the obtaining of the hologram is that the LED light is uh, right now is not in the center of the uh, of the setup every time. So we need to cal so we need to cal calibrate the position of the uh, of the LED and fix it, fix it so that we can obtain the same light uh, source environment every time. So now we come to the future work planning. Um, so, um, so first, uh, like we said, we want to improve the 3D printing houses. So we for, we want to have an adjusted object plate position so that we can adjust the uh, so we can adjust the distance between the object plate and the and the and the sensor so that we can uh, make uh, make the uh, hologram less blur and more precise. And also, we want to increase, uh, build a bigger box uh, for the host uh, modules so that it can increase the system's robustness. And second one, uh, second uh, work is is the most crucial one, which is to design and implement hologram hologram reconstruction. So, so uh, we're gonna do this uh, first. We need want to collect the ground truth data. So. Uh, at the moment, we want to uh, we are we are decide, uh, trying to just to use the images from which we uh, we already observe uh, we can um, obtain from the optical microscope uh, microscope as a as a ground truth data, and then we want to build this reconstruction algorithm, and uh, and then we want to train the network model and the last and we want to evaluate this model compared to Compared to the uh, existing reconstruction algorithms, and of course the thesis writing will go along the way, and uh, uh, for so we will constantly doing this uh, review and uh, feed, uh, review the writing for each part of the thesis, and uh, yeah, and that's uh, I think that concludes this presentation and. Uh, so thanks for your attention. So if you have any question or feedback, so please feel free to share now. <clears throat> Thank you, Linye. So the, the first question that I have is that, um, uh, yeah, is this, uh, do, do, are we supposed to, to sort of uh, proceed with some sort of a uh, uh, protocol now? Uh, do you know what? Uh, do you need to get a grade from this uh, specific uh, uh, presentation or something like uh, that? No, it's uh, it's just like this presentation is just purely not. Is there's no grade uh, consisting of this presentation? So it's okay, like so kind of like a, it's, yeah, it's you can share a, whatever you want. Yeah, it's so just it's a formality. Just okay, advice, uh, yeah, which we can. Get okay, now. okay, very good. So, very good. So, um. Well, my first piece of advice perhaps would be about the title. I'm not yes. sure if I can. Yeah, so uh, rather than calling it um, of the microfluidic system, I would probably go with image-based control of microfluidic systems. <laughs> okay. more, more generic. And, and All right. is the scope of the project now already the control itself, or is it just the imaging? Yeah, actually, yeah, that's also true. So for the time being, uh, you're not going to be controlling, right? Yeah. So the very important part of control is like you have or you have a good observation, then you do the control. So we are. So now I think most of the, this uh, this thesis we will we will uh, really. I mean, given the timeline we have, I mean, because we if I want to present this thesis in June, then 
uh, we will first, of course, we need to focus a lot on the image, uh, holographic image construction part so that we can obtain good images. And later that, we can use this image for object, object detection and uh, tracking those kind of things. Yeah, no, but in general, in general, I think, and as we discussed eh, that the, the, the goal of the, the thesis would be to build this uh, platform so that we can obtain images. And the idea eventually is to image an actual microfluidic system that produces droplets and to be able to essentially see uh, that uh, process, which is a dynamic process of droplet production while it occurs. So maybe actually the the title of the thesis should reflect that a bit more accurately. And rather than calling it image-based control of the microfluidic system, maybe we should actually call it something like um, real-time imaging or lens-free imaging yeah. of uh, microfluidic droplet production. Yeah, and that would be a so, bit more think, accurate. Yeah, because uh, well, in the beginning, I mean, this uh, is just like when we actually write the thesis proposal, uh, we are when we are talking about it, it's like a big topic, right? So, but I think we should we uh, we can we need to be more specific with this title because it's very you know like very generic and it covers a lot of things. So, based on our uh, current thesis, we need to more like maybe add more like the specific method we use. Or like, or also the uh, like, for example, lens free. Uh, this is a key word, and really yeah. on network. Then we also need to use that. Yeah. So that would be one comment. That maybe make the in general the the title perhaps a bit more more reflecting the the actual work that you're gonna do. Um, then I have a couple more comments. If you can, uh, I I cannot slide uh, pass on to next slides. Uh, can you perhaps uh, go to the next slide? Which slide? Which Keep slide going. Are... Keep going. Maybe. Okay. No. 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 Wait. 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 <laughs> You're going too fast now. <laughs> yeah. Is it here? Uh, so. Um, well, that would be perhaps one comment that I had. Yeah, you're showing like the full scale of the hologram, which is what we discussed, yeah? to show more or less a bit the, the difference in, in field of view that you kind of uh, can obtain. But one comment perhaps that I have here is that um, the, the uh, microscopy image that you are showing is taken mm -hmm. with an objective, which is 4x. And therefore, uh, of course, uh, there are man potentially lower magnifications. You could go with a 2x as well, you know? So maybe mm -hmm. one thing that at some point to keep in mind when you comment and you make this comparison eh, is that uh, yeah, also another thing that you can see is that the magnification that you see in the, in the microscopy image is larger than the one from the hologram, okay? So at some point, if we want to compare sort of the, the actual field of view, we should compare it potentially with the same magnification. Or, or if we don't uh, have images uh, in terms of uh, a lower magnification, because I think for the time being, perhaps the microscope only has a 4x. I'm not sure if we have a 2x. Maybe what we could do at some point is try to take images with another setup that uh, reflect yeah. better the same magnification. Just just a comment, OK? Because, of course, yeah. um, one thing that, that I can clearly see here eh, is that we're comparing two things that perhaps are not uh, com directly compa comparable. In, in, right. in well, this aspects. is uh, because we are just using those one you know, microscope uh, from, from in our lab. Yes. So, yes, I, so this I, is like I the know. biggest one we like the the, the smallest like one, the yeah. smallest that yeah we have. So in, in my I other know. setup, I, then we can. Yeah. So what 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 I'm saying is like, and this perhaps also uh, for Big Nan, maybe at some point uh, you could try to uh, use. We have a stereoscope also in the lab, yeah. but there you can adjust uh, the mag the magnification as well. You know, so at some point perhaps take a few images with that too, so that we can see. 
what the actual field of view is at a comparable magnification, okay? Okay. So uh, if you go back then, uh, one by one, I will tell you to stop, but to be a bit more, uh, a bit slower if possible. Can you go back? Go back? Yeah. Uh, keep going. Uh, okay. Uh, no. Uh, yes. No. Well, next one. Mm -hmm. So actually, the previous one. <laughs> And now another one back. Okay, so here uh, you are discussing imaging microscopy, optical microscopy and lensless microscopy. So, um, so first of all, I'm not sure you can you can actually call it lensless microscopy. I uh, yeah I think uh, I, I I just uh, use this word uh, I think from no but it's paper, fine. But maybe yeah. maybe it's maybe yeah probably it's 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 still okay but uh, yeah since you're looking at things that are in the micro scale maybe you can still it still qualifies as microscopy but the important thing here generally is that uh, you make this discussion about when you uh, increase the magnification the the view area is reduced and then you say that lensless microscopy is a large field of view well i mean not necessarily it depends on then uh, the actual size of the sensor okay so what i would suggest generally speaking is that um uh, when you when you discuss this perhaps it would be interesting to sort of put things a bit more into into their actual context and uh, and maybe uh, give perhaps a, a, an example huh? of for example if you were imaging with a microscope with a magnification of 2x or 4x huh? you would get uh -huh. uh, and then if you uh, were actually uh, through a lensless uh, setup, imaging setup, within a specific size of sensor, you would mm -hmm. get this other uh, specific uh, uh, field of view, okay? So I would say that perhaps right. making a comparison would be nice here. And the other yeah. uh, topic to discuss here would be um, why would you possibly test it in a larger field of view? So what we what we are trying to do in general is to uh, obtain basically the means to allow us to see uh, in the end what is occurring in a in a in a platform that would have approximately the size of uh, the size of uh, uh, one of these uh, well plates, okay? And in order mm -hmm. to sort of be able to visualize what is occurring at the same time in such a large platform, you have to really move away from regular uh, optical microscopy using lenses. So that sort of discussion, yeah. I think it's important to sort of uh, have it here so that you sort of justify the general interest of that that we have for doing this mm -hmm. yeah. exploration okay so th these are just a couple of comments that just to keep in mind not necessarily for the presentation but also when you sort of build your thesis for the justification of your work right so i don't um, have any further questions i also have a few questions uh, uh, so, uh, if, if, you, if you can please go to, to slide 13. Um, 13? That's maybe an important one. Yeah, here, your entire flow. Um, so, I was, I was wondering, so indeed your hologram is here, yeah, it is not an image that can be interpreted, but actually your second image uh, uh, here called network input is in this 
case in this application may be already good enough to uh, to count the number of droplets, to measure droplet size and speed and so. So I was wondering why mm -hmm. do you want to refine this uh, output of the free space propagation uh, 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 algorithm? Why do you want to refine that with, the, with, the, with deep learning? Uh, it's only adding like colors and textures here in this example. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh... So when I first look at this, uh, uh, so this is actually a paper, uh, a picture from a paper. So uh, it's uh, uh, so it's uh, we we actually as I mentioned before, I mean there are some like existing, you know, like so there are some algorithms maybe already doing this hologram per, like reconstruction pretty well, and we are, um, but we want to explore um, more of the. Uh, uh, so, like I said, like for this for this example, uh, it's actually quite. Uh, it seems already like the images. It's quite. You can already tell like what is uh, yes. this kind of like a circular things around. Um, but uh, we we um, but this I would think uh, this is a more like a, a explore, uh, explorative like progress because the uh, because right now we uh, haven't actually start really like to get some. Uh, like a prototype of the reconstruction algorithm going on. So now we are just here. It's uh, we are just uh, trying to investigate the possible ways of doing this. So in the in the thesis work, we will actually we will uh, uh, like like here say, says we will probably try with the free space propagation and to see what's the result we are getting. And we want to compare with uh, I mean as a thesis we want to explore the. Uh, the the performance of the front uh, neural network, which is a very popular, also mentioned like which has a very popular uh, 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 like promising futures for for doing this uh, uh, to doing this uh, kind of reconstruction. And uh, because in the end, uh, one of the uh, goals that we are trying to have here is to have a uh, to sort of like to do the live stream of the experimental experimentation. So um, because then it requires very fast process uh, speed and uh, yeah. speed and all. yeah. So uh, right now we a, yeah, yeah. I think that's a downside of using deep learning if you want to do indeed real time and on large resolutions image processing. Then yeah, that's just the thing that deep learning is not good at. Yes, yeah? so you need lots and lots of uh, computing power. If you can do it mm -hmm. with like fixed algorithms, uh, like uh, using the in the first step, then that would be uh, would be nice. But uh, yeah, indeed, maybe that's a challenge in the thesis or, or, or a question, a research question. What is the best approach? What, what yields the best images? Because I was wondering yeah. in your next slides where you give these examples with these um, with these numbers and so these these bluish uh, things. Is that a hologram or is that a, an example of the second uh, result after this is your just like pure. Is, this is a purely just, hologram. Like this is actually yeah, yeah, yeah. here. That not that's yeah. there. Eh? Yeah, and it's already interpretable a bit. So if you do there the free space propagation algorithm, maybe that's um, already yeah. Happy. But but the one problem is uh, what we are getting here is like this is not the actual things we are trying to observe. This is like just some you know like a. Some yeah. standard, uh, you know, smaller things like just, uh, you know, like uh, the light just goes through this uh, num, like this kind of hole, and you can see yeah. it. But in the end, like uh, we said, we want to like uh, actually do the droplets. Uh, for example, we want to observe the droplets in the microfluidic uh, chips, and that might be completely different. So, so yeah. right now, I mean, here it's just like to first uh, get get to have a look at all what we are uh, getting here. From this setup yeah 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 so indeed that's maybe a good suggestion so so quickly to go to real droplets see how they uh, how you can can uh, image them and how you can view and make the view of them uh nicer right. with all these yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay okay nice. uh, nice. so does anyone still have any question because we are running out of the and uh, we are yeah, like a lot of like two times yeah <laughs> Okay, so let's, okay. let's perhaps uh, leave it here then. Thank you very much for your presentation, Linye. It was very nice to see.